Welcome to the Star Citizen Pledge Guide, your handbook to pledging for ships in the best damn space sim ever, Star Citizen. I'm your host Ben, also known as Ultramyth on the RSI forums. In this episode of the SCPG, we're going to take a look at your pledge options. If you're interested in the space trucking style of play, first we are going to review how cargo transport is expected to work in the game, and then we will get straight on to the ship guides. The Versus economy relies on the transport of goods from one system to another. As a transport entrepreneur, you will be able to buy goods for a lower price in one system where they are produced or in low demand, and then sell them for a profit in a system where they are in high demand. How much cargo your ship can carry is based on volume, which is abstracted as freight units, shown in the ship's statistics. Your cargo holds can take a theoretical maximum volume of cargo equal to this amount, but unless you are a Tetris genius, you will likely never see it due to the odd shapes of different kinds of cargo. Cargo mass will also play a role. A heavy load is going to affect how well your ship handles in flight. Most cargo transactions will be handled by Mobiglass, where the goods are delivered to your hangar after you order them. You will be able to employ dock workers to load the cargo automatically, or load it yourself in a minigame. Alright, now that you have a grip on the basics of cargo, let's take a look at Star Citizen's cargo hauling dream rigs. I am mostly going to stick to ships that are currently available for sale on the RSI pledge site. Remember, CIG is offering these pledge ships to help fund Star Citizen's development. All of these ships will be available for in-game credits in the final game universe, and they are not required to start the game. Remember, you will be able to upgrade most ships to fulfill a role closer to your desired playstyle, but the ships we are going to discuss are already niche towards the theme of this episode. Currently, ships can be acquired through pledging either for a game package or as a standalone ship. Game packages include not only the ship itself, but ship insurance, a hangar, some starting UEC, and in the least, a digital download of the manual, Squadron 42, and of course, Star Citizen itself. Standalone ships come only with the ship, a hangar, and ship insurance. You will need at least one game package to be able to play the game when it releases. Also keep in mind that the pledge prices mentioned can have changed since the time this guide was made and your visit to the pledge store. Four things are important for a cargo ship. Speed, power, protection and cargo capacity. The RSI Aurora MR has none of these things in any great quantity, but it is a tough and flexible little starter ship. At a mere $30 for the game package, or $25 for the standalone, this is probably the cheapest AAA game you are ever going to buy. The Aurora is a starter ship, and as such, can be used for cargo running. But this is the station wagon, not a delivery truck, with a mere 16 units of cargo. However, with the addition of an aftermarket cargo module and jump drive, you've got yourself a station wagon with a trailer. Although these are not impressive attributes by any stretch, the Aurora has two things in spades. Its small radar signature and its inconspicuousness. After all, the Aurora series is the most common type ship in the verse. If you can't wait for the Persistent Universe to come out, you can already fly the Aurora in-game. You can try flying it in the dogfighting module with Arena Commander module pass, or by forking out for the Arena Commander starter package, which also includes beta access. The serious space trucker will have to invest a little in their rig for a greater cargo payoff. If you are looking for something more like a delivery truck, the Cutlass may be your best bet. The Cutlass Black costs $115 for the game package, or $100 for the standalone. Traditionally a search and rescue ship, the Cutlass has been a favourite of pirates for many years, 
thanks to its tractor beam, considerable cargo space and turret. It can fit a crew of three and boasts powerful engines and manoeuvring thrusters, which should still perform well even when laden with cargo. This ship would be ideal for smuggling sensitive cargo or trading in more dangerous parts of space. The Cutlass is available both in the Hangar Module and in Arena Commander. However, it will be seat locked to the pilot until Arena Commander 2.0. If you want to take a serious crack at space hauling, the Freelancer Max is the big ideal rig for you. This is the true trucking rig with sleeping quarters and a jump drive for the long haul. The Freelancer Max costs $155 for the game package or $140 for the standalone. Its generous cargo haul can hold 280 freight units and it is rumored that this figure may increase in the near future. A massive power plant, strong shield and overpowered engines let the Max carry a heavy load and still perform when your rig comes under threat. This ship won't be flyable until Arena Commander 2.0, but you can walk around it in the hangar module. But maybe you want to be more than just a space truck driver. Maybe you want to drive a road train. The RSI Constellation Taurus is a cargo hauler's dream, with more in common in a freight train than a big rig. Although it weighs in at $200 for the game package and $150 for the standalone, it is most certainly the most bang for your buck as far as pure cargo capacity is concerned. This monster is almost 60 meters in length and can carry 1900 freight units. It is still light on armaments, shielding and accessories, very much a bare bones version of the Constellation series, but it is by no means defenseless. The ship also comes with shielded cargo compartments, which can make it an effective smuggling ship. The Taurus is already available in the hangar module, but won't be available to fly until Arena Commander 2.0. Aside from the ships we have seen so far, which are permanently available in the RSI Pledge Store, there are a number of dedicated cargo ships which are either not yet available or have been offered to date only in limited ship sales. The Drake Interplanetary Caterpillar is an effective transport. Despite its similar size to a Constellation Taurus, its unique and modular configuration allows it to transport up to 3200 freight units of cargo. Unfortunately, it has a reputation for being used in pirate raids, which can both garner unwarranted attention from the authorities, but may provide the benefit of a more inconspicuous vessel in more dangerous regions of space. The plus side of catering to pirates means that the ship is remarkably well armed for a trader, and it is suited to boarding actions as well. The last time the ship was available it cost $245. The Banu are an alien race known for trade, and the merchantman is the most iconic of their vessels. Not widely available, this ship crops up mostly at the annual sale in November and this year cost $250 the last time it was offered. This is a truly alien ship, with a unique design that sets it apart from other trading vessels. However, it does have a massive cargo hold, and is able to carry a volume of up to 6,000 freight units. It will however require a bigger NPC crew of 8. So look at this ship as something more of a container ship than a big road train. Well, that's it for this episode of SCPG. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about your options if you want to become a space trucker. If you want to find out more about Star Citizen, head on over to the RSI website at robertspaceindustries.com. You can also check out episode 1.0 of SCPG, where I sum up what Star Citizen is all about. As always, I would like to thank Chris Roberts and the amazing team at Cloud Imperium Games its partners and subsidiaries for bringing us this no compromise space sim.